Hello, everyone, and welcome to Conversations with Matt DeLockery. We're continuing our look at Colossians 3 and trying to understand why does a Christian life look the way it does. So let's do a very brief recap to remind you where we are so that you understand what's going on in Paul's thought and how we're looking at you know the breakdown of this thing that is the Christian life. So we started in verses 1 through 4 of chapter 3, talking about what a Christian's focus should be. The idea is we're supposed to be making the world a better place, not just trying to figure out how to survive the best we can in this world. And because of that focus, that's going to lead us to to stop doing certain actions, which was what we talked about in the first part of uh, verses 5 through 11. And it's going to lead us to start doing other actions, which is what we're going to talk about next week. So here is the our new focus, then stop doing this stuff, and then next week is going to be start doing this stuff. Now, in between is what we're going to do this week. This week, we're going to answer the very important question, why? Why does the Christian life take the shape that it does? Why do we have to do these particular things and not do these other particular things? And, you know, what's what's the point of all this? Well, making the world a better place is part of it. Um, but how we go about doing that is related to uh, another topic. So let me read two verses from this section, which is really going to be what our focus is on uh, today. It's actually just going to be on a single word out of these verses. Uh, Colossians 3, verses 9 through 10 say, Do not lie to one another, since you have taken off the old man with its practices, and have put on the new man, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. So the word we're going to focus on here is image. Um, Image sounds like a really technical theological word, and it kind of is, but I think it's been made more complicated than it really needs to be. So you already know what an image is. An, an image is something that you have a lot of. If you think about your phone, you've got all sorts of pictures on your phone. Those are images, right? You're like, well, I've got some images. Let me just send it to you. Like, you use images in a digital sense all the time, and that makes perfect sense. So think about what an image actually is. It's it's not the thing of your thing itself. Uh, if you take a if you take a selfie, that's that's not your soul. Okay, it hasn't it hasn't taken your soul into your camera. Your your phone doesn't have that. Uh, it's a digital representation of you. An image is a representation of something else, right? I mean, that's what a picture is, right? And in the ancient world, they had images as well. They were carvings or paintings or statues, you know, that that sort of thing. Um, images on coins. And they were representations of someone or something else. I mean, that's really straightforward. Well, we talked a lot about the concept of image earlier in our in our discussion of Colossians, and that was several years ago, so I don't expect you to remember that. But what what we learn uh, when we're looking at verses uh, 15 to 16 of chapter 1 was that Christ is the image of the invisible God. So basically, God is this, you know, sort of being who's kind of like up there and out there, and you can't see him, and you don't really know what's going on, and what does he look like, and he doesn't really look like anything because he doesn't have a body. and it's hard. Yeah, it's, it's really kind of hard to wrap our minds around God. And so the Christian idea is that, okay, if you want to know what God is like, look at Christ. That's what he's like. It doesn't mean that he's a Middle Eastern man who had a beard and sandals, um, not white. It means that if you want to know, you know, something about the character of God, who he is, what he's about, uh, look at Jesus, and that'll tell you what he's about. So Christ is the image of the invisible God. If you want to know what this God that we can't see or hear or touch or, or smell or, or any of those things, if you want to know what that God is like, look at Jesus. He will explain that to you. You will get your understanding from him. He is God's image. And the neat thing about that is that, unlike an image on your phone, he was actually a person. So the people who were living and acting, um, you know, in the world of uh, the first century Mediterranean, first century Palestine, uh, who interacted with Jesus, actually got to see a living representation of God. And because Jesus was alive— that means 
he could act on God's behalf because he's not like a static image. He's not a picture that just sits there. He's not a carving or, or a statue who just sort of sits there and that's it and communicates things through symbolism like, you know, paintings or, or images that communicate via symbolism. Well, no, he can actually do stuff. So he could live and act and, and, and work things out and do things and, and interact with people and say, yes, this is a great thing or no, that's a bad thing or I'm going to go have dinner with you. And, and you could see what God is like in real life. You could see, like, if God became human, what would he be like? What would he act like? And Jesus didn't just reflect God. He could represent God. He could act as God would in any given situation that he happened to be in. And the Gospels record that. And there's a whole bunch of really interesting stuff in there that helps you get into the mind of what, of at least what Christians consider God to be, or who God to be. Because if Jesus represents an God and acts on God's behalf, then you get to see a little bit of what God is like. Now, the interesting thing is what we just saw in Colossians is that Christians are being renewed after the image of their creator. So, in the same way that Christ reflects God, we are supposed to reflect God. Now, it's not going to be to the full extent because, you know, we're not divine. So, I mean, we're going to be a bit limited in things. Nevertheless, the goal is the same. We're not supposed to just reflect God. We're supposed to represent him and act as he would and live as he would if he were here. You know, Christians will sometimes say that we are to be God's hands and feet in the world. Well, this is the sort of place that that comes from. Um, now, we don't always act like it, but that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be living as God would in the world. And so the reason that we have certain actions that we're supposed to do and certain other actions that we're not supposed to do is because we're supposed to be representing God. And if we want to represent God correctly, we need to act like he would act. And that's why the thing that we talked about last week, all this selfishness stuff, being selfish does not reflect the character of God. So if we want to reflect God, if we want to represent him in the world and, and, and do what he would be doing if he were in our place, acting selfishly, that's not it. Now, next week, we're going to talk about what it looks like to actually actually God actually act like God, not just stop doing these things, but start doing these things. Uh, we're going to talk about that. But the reason that we're doing all this is to both reflect and represent God and be who he would be in the world, kind of like Jesus did, smaller scale, but same idea, same direction. We are to represent God, and that's what it means to live as the image of God.